Hey, good evening, everyone. We welcome you to our uh, book club conversations about Ben Franklin. Um, I'm Jeff Good, Chief Education Technology Officer from PBS Western Reserve um, in Kent, Ohio. And along with my panelists from the Public Library of Youngstown and Mahoning County, I have in attendance Kelly Cotell and Amy Burkhard, Burkhard rather. And we're hoping that you'll enjoy these book offerings from the library that look at that extraordinary life of Ben Franklin. These virtual outreach opportunities are part of our Ben Franklin Explore outreach series, and that's connected with the upcoming premiere of Ben Franklin, a film by Ken Burns that will be premiering on PBS Western Reserve on April 3rd and April 4th. As always, uh, we are in a webinar, so our, for our rem remote viewers, feel free to drop any questions to Kelly or Amy or even myself in the chat box, and we'll be sure to discuss those during the webinar. So let's, let's take a closer look at this upcoming documentary with this exclusive documentary review clip. Histories of lives are seldom entertaining unless they contain something either admirable or exemplar. Know then that I am an enemy to vice and a friend to virtue, a mortal enemy to arbitrary government and unlimited power. I am naturally very jealous for the rights and liberties of my country and the least appearance of an encroachment on those invaluable privileges is apt to make my blood boil exceedingly. Benjamin Franklin. Franklin is by far the most approachable of our founders. He's not somebody made of stone like a George Washington. Franklin was pretty simple in his moral code. He was driven by a desire to pour forth benefits for the common good. But there's a lot in Benjamin Franklin that makes you flinch. And we see Franklin not as a perfect person, but somebody evolving to see if he could become more perfect. He was a teenage runaway who achieved such remarkable success that his example would be handed down for generations as the embodiment of the American dream. He was a printer, a publisher, and a writer producing everything from essays on politics and religion to biting satires and words of wisdom that would endure forever. He was a prolific inventor and a scientist whose pioneering discoveries would make him the most famous American in the world. He was a civic leader, the founder of a library and a college who introduced a host of improvements that made the lives of everyday people better. He embraced the Enlightenment belief in the perfectibility of human beings, but no one understood their foibles and failings, including his own, better than he did. He also owned and enslaved human beings and benefited from the institution of slavery. He was a reluctant revolutionary who became an indispensable founder of a new nation helped craft the document that declared his country's independence, and then did as much as anyone to secure the victory that assured it. And he guided the complicated compromises that created his nation's constitution, then tried to rectify its central failing. He constantly remade himself, from apprentice to printer to scientist, to government official, to revolutionary, to abolitionist. He never was finished with himself. He always thought that he was a work in progress. He could be funny and unforgiving, folksy and philosophical, generous and shrewdly calculating, broad-minded yet deeply prejudiced. A family man who spent years away from his wife and let political differences 
destroy his relationship with his son. He concealed those contradictions behind the carefully crafted public image. He's a Puritan who then becomes the leading figure in the Enlightenment. So he stands astride so many contradictions in his own life that he understands them and they don't become contradictions for him. They become some seamless web of insight. He wrote so much, he wrote so well, he's somebody that we need to know about. He can put us in touch with the sensibilities of the 18th century in a way that makes it both accessible and yet captures its remoteness. Franklin is endlessly, endlessly interesting. He is the only founding father who evidently had a sense of humor, who was evidently human, who evidently had a sex life. And there's so much about him that makes him seem approachable on the one hand and superhuman on the other hand. Let all men know thee, Benjamin Franklin said, but no man know thee thoroughly. I never intend to wrap my talent in a napkin. To be brief, I am courteous and affable, good-humored, unless I am first provoked, and handsome, and sometimes witty. If you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten, either write things worth reading or do things worth the writing. Benjamin Franklin So that gives you a really good idea of the uh, the overview of the documentary. We'll be doing a, a follow-up, a documentary a review next Tuesday uh, from six to seven o'clock. So feel free to check that out. We'll take even a further look into that documentary. I can't say enough about the work of our collaborating partners, Kelly and Amy specifically, the Public Library of Youngstown and Mahoney County is one of our collaborative partners on our Ben Franklin Explore series. And the first of all, they've shared with us a series of book club clips. Um, they're short videos that are highlighting the books that are related to Ben Franklin and his extraordinary life. Kelly Cotell from the Public Library has done an excellent job in reviewing five books about Benjamin Franklin for our adult readers. So let's take an opportunity. We'll check out each of these book clips, uh, starting with The First American, The Life of Time, Life and Times of Benjamin Franklin um, with this book club clip. And please remember to our virtual audience, uh, feel free to drop any questions to Kelly or Amy in the chat box, and we'll be sure to discuss those during the webinar. So let's take a closer look. The First American, The Life and Times of Benjamin Franklin by Pulitzer Prize finalist, H.W. Brands. Benjamin Franklin, perhaps the pivotal figure in colonial and revolutionary America, comes vividly to life in this masterly biography. Wit, diplomat, scientist, philosopher, businessman, inventor, and bon vivant, Benjamin Franklin was in every respect America's first Renaissance man. From penniless runaway to highly successful printer, an ardently loyal subject of Britain, to architect of an alliance with France that ensured America's independence, Franklin has become one of the world's most admired figures. Drawing on previously unpublished letters and a host of other sources, this book is a thoroughly engaging biography of the 18th century genius. The First American. Once again, that's the first American, um, the life and times of Benjamin Franklin. Um, Kelly did a wonderful job, and it's amazing that your that your uh, clothing matches. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, it's, yeah, just continuity. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. Outstanding. Let's take a look at our next book, and uh, our next book. Let me get my speaker notes open here. Um, our next book is um, Young Benjamin Franklin. Let's take a let's take a closer look. Young Benjamin Franklin, The Birth of Ingenuity, by Pulitzer Prize finalist Nick Bunker. From his early career as a printer 
and journalist to his scientific work and his role as a founder of the New Republic, Benjamin Franklin has always seemed the embodiment of American ingenuity. But in his youth, he had to make his way through a harsh colonial world where he fought many battles with his rivals, but also with his wayward emotions. Taking Franklin to the age of 41, when he made his first electrical discoveries, this book goes beyond the legend to reveal the sources of his passion for knowledge and always trying to balance virtue against ambition. Franklin emerges as a brilliant but flawed human being. With archival material from both sides of the Atlantic, we see Benjamin Franklin in London, Britain, and Philadelphia as he develops. Young Benjamin Franklin. Another good one. <laughs> Sounds like you've got quite a few good ones, which is outstanding. We sure um, do. Let me go to the next book. And our next book, okay. reviewed by Kelly, is um, that. This is the cover. I had to think about that for a minute. This is the cover of the book. So if you're interested, this is what young Benjamin Franklin, um, the, the the birth of. Of ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Our next book is Benjamin Franklin, American Life. Benjamin Franklin, an American Life by Walter Isaacson. In this vivid and witty full scale biography, we discover how Franklin defines both his time and ours. The most interesting thing that Franklin invented and reinvented was himself. America's first great publicist, he was consciously trying to create a new American archetype. In the process, he carefully crafted his own persona, portrayed it to the public, and polished it for posterity. In this colorful and intimate narrative, we are provided the full sweep of Franklin's amazing life, from his days as a runaway printer to his triumphs as a statesman, scientist, and founding father. You'll see how Franklin helped to create the American character and why he has a particular resonance even today. So that is Benjamin Franklin and American Life. I'm going to quiz you in a bit here, Kelly, so you can oh, have to be prepared. Oh, it's, it's not a bad quiz. Um, Our next book review is Benjamin Franklin, Lives and Legacies. Let's take a closer look. Benjamin Franklin, the Lives and Legacy series by Edwin S. Gustad. Here is truly one of the most extraordinary lives imaginable. A man who, with only two years of formal education, became a printer, publisher, postmaster, philosopher, world-class scientist and inventor, statesman, musician, and abolitionist. This book presents a chronological account of all these accomplishments, delightfully spliced with quotations from Franklin's own extensive writing. Along the way, we learn about Franklin's personal life, including Franklin's thoughts on such topics as religion and morality. And I'd like to share with you the section from the book. Franklin had only a certain time on this world stage, 1706 to 1790, but he made the very most of this time in service to politics, to science, to literature, and one might be so bold as to say, to the welfare of humankind. One takes no great risk in getting to know Benjamin Franklin much better. The risk, rather, is in missing the opportunity to walk beside so amiable, so generous, and so wise a companion. So this book is a very quick and lively read. So if you want to deep dive into Franklin's life but are short on time, <laughs> this one is a brisk 125 pages. All the important highlights, what makes Franklin Franklin, are certainly included as well as much of Franklin's own words and writings. Easy for non-historians to understand, might also be a good fit for teens. It's a Cliff Notes version, so to speak, for the serious Franklin fan about to dive into his other big biographies. Benjamin Franklin, The Lives of 
And like you said, Kelly, a short read, the clip mm -hmm. note version. Yeah, it was a brisk read. It was one of my favorites. And let's look at our last one. My other favorite. <laughs> our next book clip, it features Founding Fathers. Founding Fathers, The Fight for Freedom and the Birth of American Liberty by K.M. Coastal and Jack N. Wacove. This book tells the story of the great American heroes who created the Declaration of Independence, fought the American Revolution, shaped the U.S. Constitution, and changed the world. Filled with beautiful illustrations, maps, and inspired accounts of the men and women who fought in America, Founding Fathers brings the birth of the new nation to light. The era's dramatic events are punctuated with lavishly illustrated biographies of the key founders who shaped the very idea of America. Alexander Hamilton, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, James Madison, and of course, Benjamin Franklin, an ideal book for history buff and student alike. Founding So as we look through the books, we've covered, um, this is Founding Fathers, The Fight for Freedom. What I love about it is we've got up on our screen right now, um, we show you of that adult books list. These were the mm -hmm. ones highlighted by Kelly's Book Club Clips, and that includes The First American, The Life and Times of Benjamin Franklin by H.W. Brands, The Young Benjamin Franklin, The Birth of Ingenuity, I struggle with that word, um, Ingenuity by Nick Bunker, Benjamin Franklin and American Life by Walter Isaacson, Benjamin Frank Franklin, Lives and Legacies, and finally, Founding Fathers, the, flight, the Fight for Freedom and the Birth of American Liberty. Kelly, thanks so much for the wonderful book club clips. Um, Thank you, Jeff. It was my pleasure. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask, well, before I go there, um, the, our remote audience, if you have any questions in regards to these books, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but I thank both of you. Now, as you've reviewed these books, Kelly, but I'm going to throw Amy in the mix here, too. You know, what were, and I'll go with Kelly first, what were the top three takeaways that you took away from Ben Franklin's life? Just three? Oh, I well, learned. If you have more, then we certainly have the time for them, <laughs> Kelly. Thank you. I don't think we have enough time, but uh, he, I was, I learned a lot. I got to admit, I didn't know a lot about Benjamin Franklin. You know, you know, he was, you know, one of the founding fathers and that's, that's wonderful. He was an inventor and that's wonderful, but I really dug into his life and I learned about the kinds of things that he did invent, which I think were some of the most, the most interesting things about him, like bifocals he invented. Um, let's see, where's my list here? My cheat sheet, uh, lightning rods. Franklin stoves. There's like a library chair. I didn't dig into that one, but I was intrigued about this library chair. And then probably my favorite thing that he invented was the harmonica. Sometimes it's called harmonica, but I see it as harmonica. And it's like, you know, how when people play the wine glasses, it was a musical instrument that he invented. Thank you, Amy. She's showing a picture right on the screen of his harmonica. Well, instead of you playing the glass, the glass will spin and you just touch it, you run your fingers over and it creates this really beautiful flute, light music, even Beethoven and Mozart composed songs for this harmonica. Um, and besides the inventing and uh, the coolest thing I thought about was not only was he big in uh, like the printing and the printing press, and he whipped up his own, you know, his own print shop and his own newspaper, such as uh, Poor Richard's Almanac, made him a very rich man. And he retired at age 42. <laughs> I, I find it interesting. We do have a question from the, from the crowd. Um, was Benjamin Franklin all about self-improvement? That's an understatement. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because he only had two years of formal education, but I, I don't know what it, it just stuck with him. And he really loved learning and reading and writing and constantly trying to 
not only learn new things and help improve the world, but improve himself. I also found it interesting, and then Amy, I'll go to you, is that, and I think you'll both agree, he probably was the definition of the first international celebrity. Oh, yeah. Some extent, because of all the things that he did and that reinvention, but it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just here. It was, you know, it was in other countries. So I found that very interesting that they, in this day and age that we know of so many international celebrities, um, it's so odd to think about Ben Franklin being the precursor to what we think of now with international celebrities. Amy, what were your, what were your top takeaways? Oh, I, I think my favorite thing that I learned about him was um, the silence do good letters that he wrote uh, while his brother had this paper and he posed as a widow, uh, older lady. And I read some of those letters and they were funny. And I think it just shows like the humor that Benjamin Franklin had. So I think that was my favorite part. Um, but I also, you know, once again, going into his writing, I liked all the different sayings he would have that we still use to this day, like uh, haste makes waste and um, a penny saved as a penny earned and all these things that I, I mean, I grew up listening to it and I'm sure you have too. So I think there's well, that, little bits of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, he was our, we talk about the first, you know, um, international celebrity. He was what we would consider now a modern day humorist. Oh yeah. I think so. Um, Carol has asked out in the audience, was it Ben Franklin, the one who went to Paris and wore a beaver hat? I'm pretty sure that's the legend. I, I don't yeah. know. I haven't read if it was actually true or not. I'm not sure if it's technically a beaver hat. I heard maybe it was a coonskin cap, but I think she's thinking of the right person. He, he was, I think he did intentionally wear a fur hat in France because he was trying to look like, you know, this rough and tumble American, you know, colonist. And he became a fashion icon over there in France. <laughs> it's, it's back to that international star again, isn't it? Yeah. Who knew? Ben Franklin was also a fashion icon. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, hey, we're going to take um, any Amy, anything else or Kelly, anything else as far as things that you've taken away? Uh, how about our, you know, how about our folks that are out there watching us remotely? What are some some of the things, you know, if you know a little bit about Ben Ben Franklin, what were some of the takeaways you you've always thought about with Benjamin Franklin? Feel free to drop those in the chat box um, and we'll share those in the in the next break. And as we get ready to move into the next break. One of the things we didn't talk about, they, my panelists are wonderful about this, is they, they talk about Ben Franklin's virtues. And so this, um, I've got a probably about two, three minute video um, that talks about Ben Franklin's virtues. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about, you know, what are, and, and I'll, I'll pose it to the audiences, as you, as you hear the different virtues that Ben Franklin had um, his, of his 12 and then it migrated to 13, um, think about which ones are the ones most interesting and maybe promising to you. Today on The Daily Dose, the 13 virtues of Ben Franklin. Through an extensive study of the world's major religions and various moral codes, founding father Ben Franklin came up with a list of 13 main virtues to which he felt that everyone should strive to live by. Once established, Franklin dedicated himself to building up these virtues in himself, developing self-editing charts to record his daily progress, ensuring that his results were always one of upward improvement. Once he had mastered a given virtue, he then moved on to focus on the next in line in his ongoing push for self-excellence. Franklin's first virtue was temperance, where he proclaimed, eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. Although in his later years, Franklin became quite a prodigious consumer of alcohol. His second virtue was silence, where he advised speak not but what may benefit others or yourself and avoid trifling conversations. Third was order, so that all a person's belongings had their rightful place and each part of one's business had its time. Fourth was resolution, 
where he encouraged people to perform without fail whatever that person resolved to do. Fifth was frugality, which suggested that a person should make no expense but to do good to others, while six was industry, where people should lose no time and always be employed in something useful. Seven was sincerity without hurtful deceit. Think innocently and justly, he wrote, and if you speak, speak accordingly. Eight was justice, where he encouraged his colonial brethren to wrong no other man, while nine was moderation in all things, and ten was cleanliness, both in body, clothing, and home. Tranquility made up his number eleven, where he encouraged readers to be not disturbed by trifles or by accidents common or unavoidable. Chastity made up his number twelve, where he wrote to rarely use sex but for health or offspring, while Franklin's last virtue was humility, where he encouraged people to imitate Jesus and Socrates. And there you have it, the 13 virtues of Ben Franklin, today on The Daily Dose. I feel like I'm uh, recreating a David Letterman sketch here, but uh, as they spoke about each of these, Franklin's 13 virtues, we looked at everything from um, temperance, um, you know, and those quotes were always, eat not to dullness, drink not elevation. So he talked about um, silence, speak not what may benefit others or yourselves, but avoid those trifling conversations, order, let all things have their place, resolution, resolve to perform what you want, perform without fail what you resolve, frugality, make no expense to do good to uh, make, make no expense rather, to do good to others or yourself, industry, lose no time, sincerity, use no hurtful deceit, think honestly, innocently and justly, justice, uh, wrong none by doing injuries or, or omitting the benefits you are du duly, duty. Uh, moderation, avoid extremes, cleanliness, tolerate no uncleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and last but not least is humility. So I'll throw it out to the, the remote viewers. Um, what of these virtues do you find as your favorite or most interesting? And while you're thinking about that, I'll throw out, um, I'll throw back to Kelly and to Amy and say, you know, what did you find most interesting about these virtues? I was trying to find just one, like my favorite one, and I, I just can't decide. <laughs> um, so I have a few um, silence, you know, using your words only for, you know, for good, not like trifling conversation or gossip. Um, sincerity, uh, always honesty is the best policy. Justice, of course, is a good one. And I like humility. You know, humility is, is always important. And I like how he said to imitate, imitate Jesus and Socrates. I found it interesting, and we talked about it before, before the webinar started. And you'll see in the documentary, there's a section that talks about the virtues and how he did his first 12 and presented those to a friend. And his friend said, you know, you left one out. You left that humility. And so um, that's interesting to, to point that out. Amy, you must have an idea of some of your favorite virtues from Ben Franklin. What are they? Um, I actually agree with Kelly. The two that stood out the most for me was silence and sincerity. Mm -hmm. um, I can't agree more that sometimes um, silence is kind of something that um, is hard to do, especially if something is difficult going on and you feel the need to like release, but sometimes Silence is the uh, best thing to do. And um, sincerity, I think um, the use no hurtful deceit, you know, uh, just, you know, be kind to one another. And I actually thought uh, the uh, cleanliness was interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, just thinking about that time period as well. <laughs> it was a good sense. idea. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, Jeff and our audience says being clean will never go out of style. Amen. That's always great. Um, <laughs> Stephanie from our audience earlier before we went into the virtues talked about that, you know, she was surprised when I was asking about what folks had um, were surprised about with Ben Franklin was she was surprised that he was a man of many talents, but really mm. just considered himself a printer. So that's very interesting that, yeah. that you uh, that 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 kind of has come out. 
Yeah, he really um, was humble despite all of his intelligence and his inventions. He practiced humility. And I think I read somewhere that he did sign his name to things, Benjamin Franklin Printer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to note, and if you do any research on Ben Franklin's virtues, there's a whole series of, of productivity videos of how to follow your life like Ben Franklin through his mm -hmm. virtues. So the folks have taken kind of a modern day spin of those virtues and apply them today. It was, very, it was very interesting when I started doing the research and I just noticed these series of you know, productivity videos and, and it was like, wow, that's very interesting. But Kelly, you said it best and that when you think about all of these virtues, all of them you know, apply today and and how you can apply that in your life so that's that's a something that's very interesting on how he's uh ben franklin much of what he does is still very applicable today mm -hmm. okay well so um jeff is asking and maybe i'll i'll defer to my librarians why was uh, ben franklin selected to be on the hundred dollar bill quick we got to do some research mm -hmm. <laughs> quick here amy you type and i'll uh I'll solve yeah. for time. Well, <laughs> they always said that Benjamin Franklin was the only United States president who was never president. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, I, oh, I was Go just going to say, um, so in 1928, uh, a testament of gratitude for his decades of work, the United States mm -hmm. put his portrait on the $100 bill. Yes, that sounds uh, correct. Yep. And some scholars claim him to be the first American. So wonderful. <laughs> Any other questions out in the audience? Feel free to drop those in the chat. Let's we're going to take a, a closer look now into Amy's uh, list of what we'll call the wh where would you consider these Amy um, age range wise book wise? Um, I would say any um, like tween and teen. I would say um, my, the first book I'm going to talk about really anyone who has an interest in Ben Franklin, I think would get a kick out of it. But I think mostly middle school to high school is what I was looking at. Wonderful, wonderful, Amy. And that list, um, as you see on the screen right now is, and Amy will go over each of these, who is Ben Franklin, Ben Franklin's Almanac, um, It's Up to You, Ben Franklin, uh, Ben Franklin Printer, and then All About Benjamin Franklin, as well as Benjamin Franklin. A variety of titles, I mean, not really, but, but obviously a variety of information. And our first one that we're going to talk about is who was Ben Franklin? First of all, I love the illustration on the front cover. And I'm sure is the book as fun as the front cover? Oh my gosh, it really is. I love this caricature of him too. Um, this one is definitely um, very popular. If uh, you have a uh, child or a tween, the who was and what was has been such a popular series in which this uh, group of people have decided to write biographies about uh, anyone who may be famous historically. Uh, and of course they had to do Ben Franklin or places or even uh, certain things like that. There's a, an I Love Lucy one. And it's just, it's such a fun series to get younger readers into learning about our history. And the great thing about this book is the illustrations are throughout. There's a lot of great like diagrams. And so this book really starts off with uh, mentioning his uh, invention of the lightning rod and the discovery of electricity and really goes through those kind of main points of his life about his childhood, being a printer, his family running away, uh, meeting his wife. Uh, creating the Poor Richard's Almanac um, and all of his other inventions, as well as his, you know, political career. But it's told in such an easy way to read. I sat down and read it for, you know, I read it in one sitting and I feel like all ages could really uh, benefit from it. And it's really simple to read. So um, I, I really liked it. There's also, they show his signature and there's a good timeline also at the end of the book. But my favorite thing is like the who's uh, books on the back just ask a question. And so the question is, who was Ben Franklin? And it says, a founding father of the United States of America, an inventor who created bifocal glasses, a musical instrument, and the artificial arm, a scientist who discovered the nature of lightning. And then there's a check mark where it says all of the above. 
So kind of a great way to kind of entice young readers. And that book is Who Was Ben Franklin by, um, that would be Dennis Fraden, is that pronounced correctly? Yes. So obviously our next book is Ben Franklin's Almanac being a true account of the good gentleman's life by Candace Fleming. So your thoughts on that, Amy, is one of your recommendations. Yes. So um, I love Candace Fleming, first of all. I think she has done a fantastic job uh, doing a lot of biographies. She has written about Amelia Earhart um, and as well as like P.T. Bardem. And she really is, I think, one of the top biographers for young people. And so the great thing about this book is um, it, it is just told so differently from how you would uh, think it would be. And the structure of it is actually kind of like a newspaper. So even just the stylistic choices that she has made uh, has been so much fun. And she really wanted to pick moments of his life. Of course, there's like the big uh, kind of moments in his life, but she really did her work. And of course, um, if you're ever looking for like a great primary source about Ben Franklin, like he wrote his own autobiography. <laughs> Uh, she definitely read that and actually decided to highlight some of the smaller moments in his life. So this does a great job to really get a sense of who Benjamin Franklin was and uh, shows a lot of the primary sources that you can get about him. So this one was great. I really enjoyed it. And that's Ben Frank Franklin's Almanac. And as you see the, the uh, cover on the... Now, I heard tell on this this next one that it might be your favorite one is that correct it is I don't know how you guessed it it this one is stunningly funny and I think very interactive and this is perfect for you know I would say anywhere from middle school to high school I it is um it's up to you Ben Franklin and first of all, this cover is hilarious. I, I love the little word bubbles and that artwork is throughout the book, but it is told in second person. So you are stepping into the shoes of Ben Franklin and you are given um, these choices. And so this book is almost set up like a choose your own adventure story. And I just, I think that's such a clever and fun, in a, innovative way of telling his story. And so um, each chapter uh, sets the scene up of what's going on in his life and you have a challenge and uh, you know the backstory. And after you get the backstory, you have a choice and it's almost told as a, like a quiz question of, you know, this is what's going on. Do you A, do this, B, do that. And you know, you as the reader, you can kind of pick what you think you would do or what you think Benjamin Franklin would do. And then it actually tells you what he ended up doing. And so it was just, it was so like interactive. And I found that it talked a lot about things that I, I didn't know about him. Like it kind of went a little bit deeper than some of the other books that I found. So yeah, this one was my favorite. <laughs> What age range would, you know, obviously it's a little more interactive. Do you look at a, at a, a older age on this one or is it pretty much, a, you know, that, that age range you were talking about? Yeah, I would say this is pretty good for, you know, anyone, I would say seventh through probably like 10th grade. It, it's a really good, uh, just, I think it's a lot of fun because even, um, even if you know a lot about Ben Franklin, there's uh, different scenes that you might not know as well. So it, it becomes a lot of fun. And um, the, the quote, if you can't read on the screen, it's all the facts, the feuds, the historic firsts, my famous quotes and more, so. Um, Jeff was asking from the audience, so it's interactive enough that you can skip around the book or is it pretty much, um, linear in reading it's it's pretty linear as far as it goes through um his life in sections but i think if you were just particularly looking at maybe his political clear career you could 
uh, just read that part. And there is a part in the back of the book that has the timeline and it says like spoilers ahead. Like if you don't want to spoil yourself, don't look at the timeline. Don't look at all these amazing things he's done. But yeah, I think it's fun reading it uh, front to back. Amy, with this age group especially, do you find that books writ written this way in the first, really the first three books that you've reviewed so far are, are really books that are, that are fun? Yes. And do you find that's, that that's really a way to capture that young reader into, into looking into history? Absolutely. Especially if they um, might not even have that uh, maybe want, maybe they have a school project or they have to learn something. I think this is a, a very fun way to be able to do that. But also just seeing um, if they do know a lot about Benjamin Franklin, it being told in a different way. Because I knew what I thought was quite a bit about Benjamin Franklin. And then I read this book and I was like, wait, the way that this is worded and kind of explained made me think about it differently. So I, I think this would be good for reluctant readers or readers who already kind of are into Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> so we talked, as uh, Stephanie po posted a bit ago from our remote audience, they talk about that Franklin considered himself a printer, B, B. Franklin printer. Talk a little bit about this book, Amy. Yeah, so this has just so much fun as far as it has just a lot of excerpts of his writing. So this is this is also like the kind of book that you would want to read if you're looking especially into uh, his printing and writing career, but kind of like all the other books that I've discussed, it goes into the biography of, you know, the beginning uh, of his life as and till the end. But I, I really liked this because this is where I read like the silence do good letters and they have just these great um, images and pictures. And um, I just, I thought this is a really good, um, like straight up informational book about Benjamin Franklin. It doesn't have the bells or the whistles that uh, some of the other books that I talked about has, but I think this is great for uh, teens who are doing you know, that research. And I, like I said, I think it's just solidly written as well. Do you find this book is a little less lighthearted as the, as the previous books you talked about? Absolutely. Yeah. More, it's, more informational. Yeah, absolutely. And it, but it, I think it's told in such a way that, and it's, it's broken up by images and different uh, texts as well, that it doesn't feel as heavy as maybe his autobiography might be. <laughs> um, but I, I found it to be really interesting. So like there's excerpts of the Pennsylvania Gazette and stuff. So I think, um, and different letters that he's written. And I think that's a lot of fun to get to see that. Wonderful. Let's so we're going to learn all about Benjamin Franklin from Elizabeth Zuckerman. So what was your thoughts on this book, Amy? Where, where does it rank in your Benjamin Franklin scale? I really liked this book, I think, because um, I'll talk a little bit about a book that Kelly has already discussed. But I think this is the great middle ground of uh, Benjamin Franklin biography. If you think that the who was Benjamin Franklin might be a little too young or easy to read. Um, and the one that Kelly discussed, The Lives and Legacies, might be a little bit too difficult. This is like the middle ground. This has the perfect amount of information as far as who Benjamin Franklin was. Um, I would just say it's like a, a step higher of a level of reading than the Who's What book, but it still has the same kind of pinpoints of his life as well as kind of some really fun facts as well as illustrations. So I feel like um, they're pretty similar, but I, I found this one to be also pretty uh, quick read, a pretty quick read. So it's a small, it's a smaller book. It's not a, a, a real lengthy book for that, for that, like you said, somewhere in the middle of the really easy book and the, and the voluminous tome book that <laughs> we talked about. Yeah, this, this is just a little over 100 pages, but what I do like about it is it has um, 
his timeline, it has the world timeline, it has a glossary in the back for words and vocabulary you might not know. Uh, and it has an index of different um, characters and characters, places and people and stuff. They're not characters, they're real. Um, so I, I do like that about it, that if you're looking for something specific in this book, it should be pretty easy to find. You know, it's funny, Amy, you mentioned characters and they're real. I, of any any person so far historically that I've researched in the last probably four or five years, I think the word character describes Benjamin Franklin very well. So I think, you know, yes, he's a real person, but I think he was a real character. We've got a, a question from Jeff, but we'll go to your last um, your last book, I think, with the, which is Benjamin Franklin Inventing America. Yes. So this book is... Um, what I would say is perfect for high school students. It definitely goes a lot more into his political career. Um, I think all the other books had a pretty good balance of kind of talking about his inventing and um, his childhood and writing, but this one really does focus on his political um, side of things. And um, one of the things that I really liked about it is uh, going into depth of his political cartoon, the join or die, um, which I has just been this iconic image that I feel like we've seen a lot in our history textbooks. And um, it's just um, really talks about uh, kind of both sides of things too. You know, I, I really liked how in the video that we watch, it talks about kind of how his, um, his life has taken this role as far as um, his political life has kind of split him from his own son. And it really dives into that, which I thought was really interesting. Um, kind of his personal philosophies as well as what he thought he needed to do. So I, it was a really, it was a very interesting book for sure. I'll fill in those gaps a little bit. It's funny that you just mentioned about being a, they reference it at that beginning review. They talk about him being estranged from his son, but yes. uh, it sounds like that book would certainly be one that uh, one of those maybe later readers would, would really get the background story on, on why that occurred. Um, so I, Amy really appreciate it. We've, I'll, I'll say that's our top 10 teen reader selections and that's everything from who was Ben Franklin, Ben Franklin's almanac, it's up to you, Ben Franklin, B. Franklin Printer, all about Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin Franklin inventing America, which fits into a question that we have from one of our, from Jeff, from our audience. Um, is He's asking as a parent, and my child is really not sure what they might like to read. Um, Amy, you have any direction of, of these six books um, to try to help a child uh, to a book on their reading level? How do you go about doing that? Yeah, so I, I think for the most part, we really discuss um, whether we're working with the teachers or uh, with the parents, kind of what books they already like to read, if they like reading, and kind of find similar reading levels. On our website, um, we have, uh, each book has a Lexile uh, number, so if they know their number, we can definitely direct them to uh, their reading level, but um, I think that's kind of the great thing is like, I, I try to pick as many books for different reading levels as I can, because I know um, I love reading and I've always loved reading, but I know not everyone feels that way, uh, which breaks my heart. No, <laughs> um, but I, I think it's something that, um, you know, if you see that your child uh, is losing interest quickly, it might be either above their reading level or um, it might be something that you may need to, you know, talk along with them and start that conversation. You know, I books bring people together, so I would love to see. You. Do do you find as a librarian and either one of you, I mean, because both the adult side and the and the teen side, do you find yourself when folks are trying to figure out where they where they should be reading, or are you? You know, I, I use this term in another meeting I had today is about meeting folks where they are. Do you find mm -hmm. that's a good approach when you're looking to get those folks involved with with reading and figuring out where they fit in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. With reading and with any sort of instruction or teaching, yeah, meet them where they are. You know, I, I'm an adult. I love kids books. I love picture books. You know, they're they're still amazing and they have 
you know, let's be honest, they have the facts broken down and easy to digest snippets and it's ideal. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit. We saw, we saw our books here. Um, we talked a bit ago about some of the inventions of Ben Franklin. And if you're not familiar with Khan Academy and uh, some of the, the, the historical uh, videos that they have, let's take a closer look at Ben Franklin and his invention. So in the last couple of videos, we've talked about Benjamin Franklin as a printer. We've talked about him as a, as a successful public leader, as a successful businessman. But we also know Benjamin Franklin, and we've talked about him as a successful writer with Poor Richard's Almanac. But, but we, there's this other side of Benjamin Franklin, which kind of makes him larger than life, which he was also a, a, a significant scientist. Yes, you know, he would have thought it was strange that you could uh, aspire to be a great citizen and not care about science. Back then, you should know about science. So he did everything from trying to track the Gulf Stream. He discovered ways to use dark fabrics to absorb heat. He creates a great uh, Franklin stove, a fireplace. That's a wonderful way to uh, be more efficient in terms of uh, uh, you know heating a room without getting it all smoky and and also not wasting the heat. I think you know normally in a fireplace, all the heat goes straight up and out. Right, and right, and it it sort of had a nice little top to it that got a little plate that got very hot. And so he was a very practical inventor, even things like, you know, bifocals. He's riding along the road one day, and he keeps wanting to read, but then look up into the distance. And he says, well, why don't I have two pieces of glass melded together, one that's good for reading and one that's good for looking out in the distance? So th it wasn't like he was a research scientist. He was just a practical inventor. What makes him into a great research scientist is when finally – you know, in the 1740s and then early 1750s, he starts doing the electricity experiments. And, and this is important. This is actually something I learned when I read your book on Benjamin Franklin is that, I mean, this was real, as you mentioned, this was real research. This was, you know, something that understanding the nature of electricity, the nature of lightning and, and, what, and, and how to manipulate it. Yeah, we think of him as a doddering old dude flying a kite in the rain. But in fact, those electricity experiments were the most important experiments of that era, not only, th uh, not only for the practical use of them, but for the theory. Up until then, people had created static electricity, you know, when you rub your sweater against a piece of glass and lots of sparks come out. And they thought that electricity was two different fluids, and they had two different names for the fluids. Franklin realizes it's a single fluid, and he creates the idea of positive and negative, plus and minus, those type of things, so that it's a flow of electricity. And he does that with his electricity experiments that really begin in the 1740s, partly as a parlor trick because he loves it, but then he realizes, no, let's study this stuff, electricity. And it, and it was a real issue. I mean, people were dying because of lightning. Uh, you know, I, I remember in the book, there was a particularly funny, I, don't, I forgot the exact quote where he said, you know, the, the, the churches get to be, tend to be hit disproportionately. So it seems like God is not favoring. Them. Right. Well, you know, what they used to do was they would sanctify the church bells so that it would ward off the lightning. And they would even sometimes store gunpowder inside churches with sanctified bells. But the lightning kept hitting the steeples of the churches. And people in Germany, Italy, and then the United States, you know, there were these huge explosions. Lightning was the great scourge of the so, time. Be clear, to ward off lightning, they would sanctify a metal bell and put it at the top of a tower. Bingo. It did <laughs> not work. And Franklin has a wonderful line in one of his letters, which is, you'd think we would try something different and see <laughs> if that worked. And so Franklin looks at sparks that he's been looking at from his electricity experiment. And he's been you know, creating these little sparks with the static electricity, but then using a wire to make it into a flow of electricity and put it into a battery. He gives us the name battery because he puts it together a lot of laden jars, mm -hmm. which is the way they used to store electricity. And so he's looking at the similarity between sparks and lightning. Hmm. And in his notebook, he makes a little chart. He said, well, sparks have these qualities. They're fast. They jump. There's a sulfurous smell. They make a little crack. And lightning has the same qualities. And he does a wonderful notation at the bottom of that notebook page, very scientist-like. He says, let 
the experiments be made. And that's how you get the lightning experiments. And he literally, I mean, you know, it's a little bit of a, uh, I guess, you know, it sounds like a legend now, but he literally did go out into a rainstorm and tie a kite with a silk thread to a kind of a key attached to a, a Leyden jar. Well, what he did was as clouds were passing over, he and his son, William, went out into a field. Uh, and as the rain started, they flew the kite and they tried to draw the electricity down from the clouds because it was his theory that the lightning strike was just a spark coming out of a cloud. And at first it didn't work, but as the cloud got nearer, he could see the little fibers on the silk, you know, get raised. And there was a key at the end of it. And that's where the, uh, the electricity, the, the charge collected. And then he was able to put it into uh, a Leyden jar or a battery. Right. So really what he was doing is he was connecting because the clouds are getting a, a they're kind of at a different electric potential up here. Mm -hmm. He By kind of connecting it with this conducting silk yeah. thread that's wet, he was able to kind of get the Leyden jar at the same potential. Right. As the clouds. Exactly. It wasn't like the lightning struck like back to the No, future it wasn't like lightning striking him. He was drawing some of the charge down from the cloud, but that showed him that what lightning was, was a discharge from the cloud of its electric potential. Right, right, right. And, and that's significant because when he figured that out, that you could manipulate electric, that, that lightning was electricity, that, these are, yeah. that, that he could kind of solve the, the church the problem. The big, big problem. And you look at that kite you've drawn, what does that show you? It says, I get it. If we put something up there like that, like a lightning rod. And he knew that pointed metal objects were very good at drawing the flow of electricity. So he said, why don't we put up a lightning rod? And he described exactly how to do it. They ended up testing it in France first because he published uh, the lightning rod uh, way of doing it. Uh, but later on, he uh, replicates the experiments in the United States. It makes him the most famous person probably other than maybe the King of France and the King of England, <laughs> the most famous person in the world, because he has solved this astonishingly uh, big problem of how do we ward off lightning from striking our buildings. Especially tall buildings like Especially church, tall like buildings, church and yeah. castle towers. And this literally saves lives. This is a... Oh, saves, you know, hundreds of lives. By far the most important invention of the time and of course, we still use lightning rods. We still ground, have grounded points on top of buildings to make sure, you know. And it's a very simple idea. If, if you give kind of this pointed conductor point that's really high up, the lightning will want to strike that. And then you can you construct a path for the lightning so it can go to the ground. So that you give a path <clears throat> for the lightning so it can go to the ground and not have to go through the building. And you know, what he does in his house in Philadelphia especially because he's about to go to England again at the time. He puts up a lightning rod, he grounds it, but he puts a tiny little bell so uh -huh. that when the electricity is coming down from the storm <laughs> is approaching and it's drawing the electrical charge from the cloud, a tiny little bell will sort of bounce back and forth uh, being jolted by the charges coming there. And it drove Deborah Reed, his wife, absolutely to distraction. So there's a wonderful letter he writes home from England telling her how to dismantle the bell and it will still be safe. Fascinating. So we had a great conversation about books and on all these different books that are available. Ellie did a wonderful job about, let's talk a little bit about how we get those books and how we, how we deal with books at the library. So many books on Benjamin Franklin are available right now at the library for you to check out. Be sure to visit our website at librayvisit.org and right on our homepage, we have a blog of fun Franklin facts that also includes a link to our cultivated lists of recommended Franklin books. To put any on hold, call us at 330-744-8636 or email us at reference at librayvisit.org. We have so many materials that you will enjoy, books and movies for adults and teens and children, and a ridiculous amount of ebooks and e-audiobooks and movies available from our Hoopla provider. We have something for everyone.
Just a few examples, here we have travel books on Boston and Philadelphia, including numerous historical sites that you can visit and you can see with your very own eyes. Books on the birth of our nation, including the Boston Tea Party, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and the Revolutionary War. Books about our founding fathers, like Washington and Jefferson and Franklin. And perhaps you're familiar with everyone's favorite founding father, and that's Alexander Hamilton. And yes, we even have the musical and several beautifully written biographies on Benjamin Franklin himself, and even an autobiography, which means that it was penned by Ben Franklin. We've learned about books tonight. We've learned about how we can get those books. And uh, we appreciate uh, the help of Kelly and Amy. You were wonderful. Um, if you are watching this event remotely, um, wanted to give you an idea of, of we've got a bunch of um, upcoming events. You'll see a QR code in the corner and that'll take you to our webpage that has the current schedule. Um, we've got many more Ben Franklin outreach events scheduled for all ages. Um, family events are happening this Saturday and next Saturday at the Campfield branch of the library, as well as the Wild Children's Science Center in downtown Youngstown. And they're also happening remotely. So if by chance you can't make it to the library or to oh wow on Saturday, um, feel free to check those out because those will also be uh, remote opportunities. Uh, this Saturday we'll be learning about kites and making that connection with what Ben Franklin did. Um, and then the following Saturday we'll be looking at um, connecting kites to um, airplanes. And we'll be doing some paper airplanes and, and learning about um, kind of the aeroplane and, and all of those dynamics. Um, we'll also have next Tuesday a documentary discussion uh, with the library once again, as well as Tracy Manning from the uh, Mahoning Valley Historical Society. And then plan on joining us in June. I know that seems like a long way off, uh, but June 18th, we have a culminating event um, that deals with let's fly, let's go fly kite with PBS Western Reserve. Um, we're thrilled to be part of the public library downtown and the use of their new outdoor space. Uh, we'll have kites and paper airplanes, and I've got some other things planned, but I'm not quite ready to tell you all about those yet. So oh, keep that in mind in June. And also remember to tune in to Ben Franklin, a film by Ken Burns, and that's premiering on PBS Western Reserve on April 3rd, Monday, and April 4th, Tuesday, starting at, at uh, 8 o'clock. And um, if you're watching these these presentations remotely um, or the rebroadcast, I've given you time to grab that QR code. So if you could do that, and that would send you right to our schedule. And last but not least, we're looking at uh, the Ben Franklin folks are very interested in um, your opinion on all of these wonderful events that, that they helped fund us to do. So once again, if you've got your you've got your phone out and you can capture that QR code, um, that'll take you to an event survey. Um, and as it says, the uh, feedback will be used to improve the development of future events. And this is the Ben Franklin folks doing this. Um, it will not be used in any way to solicit fundraising dollars. So once again, I thank you all for attending. We went over just a little bit and I apologize for that. Um, our book club event, Kelly, Amy, I can't thank you enough for your, for your input. It was wonderful. I learned a lot. I thought I knew a little bit, but I learned a lot. Um, and so I'm Jeff Good, along with Kelly and Amy. I, uh, I thank you all, um, and I appreciate all that you do on uh, watching PBS Western Reserve, and uh, appreciate all that you do in working with our libraries. Have a great night, everyone.